Hey y'all, so I'm answering the question today, can nonprofits sell products? This is a good one, let's get into it. Boston a budget I help new and small nonprofits get up and running and I also provide simple clear information for people who are trying to navigate their nonprofit startup journey if you are not subscribed to my channel make sure you subscribe because I am dropping videos every single week so I wanted to answer the question can your nonprofit sell products and let's get right to it the answer is yes and there are a lot of buts to that yes but generally your nonprofit absolutely can sell products. Now, when I'm saying products, I mean things like t-shirts or mugs, or maybe you have a book, or maybe you put together like a kit um, of some sort and you're selling it to people to be able to make money to finance the operations of your nonprofit. The answer is yes. Now, I want you to wait to the end of this video. Make sure you keep watching because at the end, I'm sharing my favorite type of product that I think every nonprofit should be selling if it's appropriate for you to sell products. Some of your nonprofits are different, your mission is different, but if you see a lane where you could sell products, this is the type of product I think every nonprofit should have. The other piece to this is you could also have a service that you sell as well. So maybe you're providing counseling or maybe you're providing mentoring um, in some sort of fashion, right? And so you wanna sell that to the public so that they can pay for part of the cost of providing that service. You absolutely can do that. A lot of people that I talk to who are thinking of starting nonprofits are really scared to do that or think that that's something they shouldn't be doing or it's taboo for a nonprofit to charge for services. You can charge, charge for services and you can choose not to. But what I want you to do is think in your community of all the nonprofit hospitals, the nonprofit schools and universities, that also charge for services. When you have to get a service from a hospital, you have to pay for it. Now, insurance can subsidize some of that, but it's still at cost. Somebody's still being charged for that. And it's the same kind of thing. Now, your nonprofit is obviously gonna be different than a hospital, but I use that example because everyone can relate to that. And once you understand that, you're like, oh, yeah, there are all kinds of nonprofits out here. Every nonprofit is not just run by volunteers only gathering products and dispersing them to the community. You really have to open your mind when you think about the potential of having a nonprofit organization. Now, there's a term for this kind of income that you're making for your nonprofit when you're selling a product or a service. It's called earned income versus what's called contributed income where contributed is those is, is money that's granted to you but earned income is money that you earn by selling a product or selling a service so i do have another video where i broke this down so make sure you check out that video as well and i also have a video that talks about different earned income ideas if you're trying to find ways to earn income and i also have a freebie and it includes 50 ideas yes five zero ideas of ways you can make money earning it instead of being granted or donating the money. So if you need that worksheet, make sure you click the link below so you can grab it for free. So if you're still listening to this video and you're learning something new, you're probably wondering, well, how does this work, Tiffany? Because I thought nonprofits aren't supposed to be making money. They're not supposed to be making profit. How does this even work? What should I be thinking about if I want to go down this road? I got you. I'm going to break down three things you need to take into consideration if you're going to decide to sell a product to finance the operations of your nonprofit. The first thing I want you to think about is its relation to your charitable purpose. So when you apply for tax exempt status in your form 1023 or 1023EZ, you need to state your charitable purpose. Also, when you fill out your articles of incorporation, you indicate your charitable purpose. That's outlined in many of the documents, many of the legal documents that you put together stating the charitable purpose of your organization. You need to make sure if you have 501c3 status that if you're participating in an activity that takes up a substantial amount of time and is making you a substantial amount of money, it needs to be related to your mission. So where I'm going with this is there's a term called unrelated business income tax. 
So if you're a tax exempt organization and you're making money through an activity that's not related to your taxes and purpose, then the IRS expects you to report that to them. And if you're making over a certain amount, then you need to pay tax on it. So I'm dropping the IRS documentation so you can look at it for yourself so you can understand unrelated business income tax. And I also did another video that I'm linking above that kind of went into this a little bit so you can understand. So if you're going to devote a lot of time to selling a product, if it's going to be a main way, one of the main ways you make money, you need to make sure that it's related to your charitable purpose. And if it's not, and you're spending a lot of time and making a lot of money through this avenue, then you may risk your tax exempt status. So you need to know all of the rules before you go down this road so you don't inadvertently make a mistake and risk losing your 501c3 status and remember i'm not an accountant and i am not your accountant so i give this information because a lot of people don't know this and you wouldn't naturally stumble upon this if you were just googling and you probably don't even know to google something like this so this is why i provide this kind of information on my channel to make you aware and to empower you to learn more for yourself and to do more research for yourself so you can know so don't just rely on me just because you're watching my YouTube videos, but also just use this as a way to empower yourself and learn yourself the rules so you don't find yourself in a load of trouble. The second thing you need to be mindful of if you're going to sell a product as a nonprofit is sales and use tax. OK, so if you're selling a product, you may need to charge sales tax to the customer and you may need to remit that tax that you collect from the customer to your state. Now, there's a lot of rules around selling products because every state is so different. So you need to, first of all, in the state that you're housed in, right, in the state that you're operating, you need to check and see what you need to do to be able to sell items. Usually you have to apply for a sales and use tax certificate or something like that. And then once you have that, you have to probably do monthly or quarterly reporting to the state to let them know the, the money that you're collecting because they want to make sure that if that product is eligible for sales tax, that you are asking for that tax and you're paying them for the tax that you collect from the customer. Also keep in mind that if you are selling items to people across state lines, then those states may have certain rules for how you approach how to sell to other people. And because every state is so different, you're going to need to investigate what happens. Now, usually only if you have a physical presence in a state, do you need to collect sales tax from the customer and give it to the state. Usually it's only in the state that you reside in or you have a presence in. But the rules are changing on this and they've been rapidly changing over the last, I would say, 10 years. So you need to keep an eye on this. Another thing to think about is if you're using like an online platform. So say that you're using like Etsy or eBay. Those platforms often collect sales tax for you. So you don't even have to think about it. And so they have agreements with the states to collect the sales tax and then remit it to those people. And it's often because they have larger a larger presence across the country and they may be responsible for doing that anyway. So they step up and collect sales tax on your behalf. But the point is you need to know who's doing what. So you're not held liable for not collecting sales tax and not reporting it back to the state. Now, this sounds really complicated, I know, and I think I may even do a video explaining the difference between sales tax and income tax because what I just talked about really has nothing to do with your tax exempt status. And even though I'm using the same word tax, it's a different kind of tax and it's at a different level, right? So I want you to understand that sales tax is a completely different ball game than your 501c3 status. So just because you have 501c3 status does not get you out of charging people sales tax in your state if you're required to do that. So you need to understand the rules and make sure you're following the rules when you are selling a product. And the third thing I just want you to keep in mind is that selling a product or selling a service is very different than writing a grant proposal or soliciting donations from donors, okay? It requires a certain set of skills, which are similar actually, the kind of marketing and the kind of things that you do to build leads and to get people to buy a product 
is similar to asking donors for money, but it is different. So if you're also collecting money from donors and at the same time selling a product, it's often going to require two different processes for you to do that. Right. So, for example, if you're selling T-shirts or if you're selling books, then you have to have some kind of marketing in place to be able to push that out. So you're doing certain kind of marketing, marketing to a particular customer to convince them to buy your product. And then there may be some things that you have to keep to keep up, like having a website that can sell products for you that can help you do keep track of shopping carts and collect money and all this kind of stuff when you're selling things. The, figuring out the sales tax, what I just mentioned before, all that kind of stuff is different from collecting donations. Collecting donations is its own set of processes, right? So on the flip side, you have to build up your donor base. You have to identify people who are your prospects to give money, which may be different from the people who would want to buy a product from you. They may be the same or they may be different. And so parallel processes, but they may come out to be different. Um, and so when you're asking for donations, right, you have to identify the prospects. You have to build those people up to trust you, to donate to your organization. Then you have to do follow up with them. You have to share the impact of your work. That is different than a customer where you may want to be following up with a customer to upsell them or following up with a customer, asking them to buy something else. So see how I'm saying they're similar because you're doing, you're warming them up to do something and then you're doing some follow up. But the purpose behind it is a little different between the two. So if you're going to sell a product, it requires a whole other pathway for building your customer base and selling to people. And you need to have the capacity to do that if you want to make substantial sales. And it's going to take some of your time away from other work that you're doing. Because running a business, that's a whole full-time job. And then you want to do that on top of running the nonprofit and doing your programming. So yes, it's important to sell products if you want to have diversified income coming from different sources. It is important to do that. But also you need to make sure you have the capacity to be able to do all those things. And you need to figure out where to put most of your effort. And if it makes sense to kind of scale down and sell products at a smaller level than it is to get donations, that's a decision that you and your board need to make. So don't automatically say, oh, because Tiffany said I can sell products, I should just sell a product. Think about the amount of effort and time it's going to take to do that and if it's worth it and figure out where's the best place to put your efforts. So I promised at the end to share with you my favorite kind of product that I think every nonprofit that sells a product should have, and it is a digital product. What do I mean by that? It's a product that you sell that people can only get electronically from you. So instead of you actually publishing an actual book, like a hard cover book, you can create an ebook or you can create a PDF that people purchase to get access to it. And the reason why I love digital products is because the overhead is low. So you don't have to worry about storage. You don't have to worry about all the things that come with having like physical product with you. You can just do something one time, right? Just write the book one time and then people just automatically buy from you and the overhead is low. Now you still have to do marketing. You still have to build your customer base in order to buy it, but it can be pretty easy to sell. If you get a platform that specializes in sending out um, digital products like the one that I use called podia.com. If you want to see it, you can see a, a link down below in the description box. It does it for you. It automatically gives people access to it and it has a system all in place for you to be able to communicate with those people. So it doesn't require a lot of effort, and a lot of money to be able to do that well and to be organized with it. So that's why I love digital products as a way to make money if you're going to sell a particular product. Was this video helpful? If it was, make sure you let me know in the comments below and let me know what other kind of videos you'd like for me to do talking about nonprofits. Thank you so much for watching my video today. If you need help from me, you can always visit me at www.bossinabudget.com. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.